when you chose to write a book about enlightenment and you chose to write a book that's showing all these positive graphs and all these trends that seem to be uh, optimistic, are you um, writing that obviously you feel this way and this is the data and this is your, your interpretation of where, where we're headed, but are you, are you also kind of like encouraging people in a way to have a more rose colored view of the world and just yeah, understand I think not, not so much rose colored, but, uh, um, it's a bad description. But no, no, no. It's a, I, know, I know exactly what you mean. No, but, um, have a, a kind of problem solving mindset, namely, we have solved problems in the past, or at least we've, we've reduced them, and that, I, I think, emboldens us to uh, look at the problems we have now and think, well, we can handle those too, if we decide to do now what our ancestors did in the past that led in the right directions. And I, I, I credit this to the uh, mindset of the Enlightenment, namely that with reason and science and a concern for human welfare, we can gradually make people better off. And as long as we maintain that kind of philosophy of, of, of living, uh, then, we, then there's a reasonable hope that we can solve the problems facing us. It doesn't happen by itself. There's not you know, a magic escalator. There's no you know, uh, uh, arc of history or dialectic or any mystical stuff that just makes us better and better. There's uh, recognizing problems and figuring out how the world works and doing our best to solve them. So that was, that was the message and the fact that we have had progress, contrary to the impressions you get from the headlines, shows that this is not a crazy, idealistic, optimistic pipe dream. It's happened, and so more of it can happen. Yeah, that's where I was going with this, is that w why do we have this desire to concentrate on the negative? Like, uh, my, I have a friend, uh, my friend Ian Edwards has this bit about the news, about renaming it to the bad news, <laughs> right. and uh, he, he goes on this whole rant about the news. Yeah, but oh, I got to check this out. But he's right, and, and yeah. it, it is a thing that we, is it because we have this concern, like we have to recognize danger, and we want to know what's happening so that we know that we're safe, but the reality is we're dealing with a world of seven billion people with seven billion stories. You know, so you're you're going to be able to see negative stuff all day long if you ch so choose to do that. If you so choose to concentrate on negativity, and it gives you this bizarre portrait of the world that the world is just this horrible place. And like, Bill Hicks used to have a bit about CNN, about you watch on CNN, and it'd be death, AIDS, pit bulls. You go outside, birds are chirping. Like, where is all this <laughs> shit happening? Like, <laughs> it's, no, I, there's, yeah. a, there's a lot to that. That's a yeah. good, those are great, great examples. But, but why do we concentrate? Yeah. What is our, our desire to concentrate only on the negative or so, mostly on the negative? Well, there is a phenomenon in psychology called the negativity bias, mm. the, uh, that bad is psychologically strong stronger than good. So wow. we, dread, is that? we dread losses more than we enjoy gains, and criticism hurts much more than praise makes you feel better. Uh, we're, our, uh, our, our minds are attracted to possibilities of, of death and danger and so on. Uh, I think it's because we are really, as, as you say, we are vulnerable. There are many more things that can go wrong than can go right, I and mean, that's kind of a implication of the law of entropy. Uh, there's a tiny fraction of the way that the world could work that works works out well for you in an awful lot of ways that things can go wrong. And so our minds are attuned to things that can go wrong, and that kind of opens up a market for experts to remind us of things that can go wrong that we may have forgotten. And so the, the news tends to gravitate to the negative, and there are actually studies that show this. You give editors uh, two different uh, framings of an event, an optimistic one and a pessimistic one, they pick the pessimistic one. And that's a trend that's actually increased. I have a graph in the book, one of the 75 graphs, uh, that shows uh, uh, an automatic analysis of the tone of the news. That is, how often are there positive words like, you know, improve, better? How often are there negative words like crisis, disaster, catastrophe? And the news has been getting more and more negative for about 70 years. Is it uniform on both sides, right and left? Uh, Good question. I don't know the answer. I suspect it is, but I don't know. I don't know the answer for sure. There and there, there are fluctuations. There are ups and downs, but overall the trend has been downward. So partly it's all. Even though, by the way, all the other graphs in the book show that, in reality, the world has actually been getting better. There are fewer deaths from war. There's fewer homicides. Um, 
we're making some progress in, uh, in pollution. There's less poverty than there used to be, more education. Uh, but the news has been getting more and more morose. Part of it is also that there's an, there is an ethic of journalism that to be responsible is to point out what's going wrong. What one editor said, uh, uh, good, good news isn't news, it's advertising. <laughs> Mm. Um, and it's also because of the time scale that it's very easy to destroy something really quickly. I mean, something blows up and uh, that's news. Improvements tend to be gradual, day by day. And there's never a Thursday in March in which something happens that, is, uh, as, as Max Roser, an economist, put, pointed out, newspapers could run the headline, 138,000 people escaped from extreme poverty yesterday, every day for the last 30 years. <laughs> but that they never ran that headline even once because there's never a particular day in which the 138,000 people were different than the 138,000 people the day before. And so the, a lot of the good things kind of creep up on us and they're never reported in headlines, whereas it's easy to blow something up and that, ha that does happen on a Thursday. So you have a, a very positive view of the future of humans. Well, it's... Uh, as as uh, the, the great uh, Swedish uh, uh, doctor and TED Talk star Hans Rosling put it when he was asked, are you an optimist? He said, I'm not an optimist. I'm a very serious possibilist. <laughs> 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 so what happens in the future, it depends on what we do now. And right. there, are, you know, there are real threats and dangers. I sure. mean, there's, there's a possibility of nuclear war. There's a po possibility of catastrophic climate change. So we can't kind of sit back and say, well, things have gotten better. Let's let them continue by sheer inertia or momentum, that's not going to happen. But what it does indicate is, well, we faced crises in the past and uh, we, we have made things better. Let's figure out how to deal with the crises now.